Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. SFA Chief in no rush to decide Gordon Strachan's fate. Ireland are in the playoffs after knocking Wales out in Cardiff. Could Messi and Argentina miss out on World Cup qualification? Yeah, just a few of the talking points on the programme tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and I'm delighted to say we have our very own Leanne Crichton of Glasgow City and Scotland here with us because, of course, Glasgow City have a huge Champions League match coming up on Thursday. And who better placed to give us the inside track on preparations for that game and whether Glasgow City can overturn that 3-0 deficit from the first leg. Hap happily for us, she's back. She's safe from Kazakhstan. Not exactly the best place to go, Ruffy, for Champions League football, but you've got to be in it. <coughs> yeah, there is, and you've got to, you've got to be able to handle the travelling and everything else that goes with it. And uh, but Nian was saying the girls were quite comfortable when they went into the game. The conditions were pretty bad, so let's hope they can turn it in the, the next one. Yep, absolutely. And not many people from Kazakhstan will have sampled Peter's Hill anyway, so that could be an eye-opener for them. We're going to talk about Glasgow City a little later on in the programme. Of course, we could have been going to Russia, uh, Ruffy, but, but it just didn't materialise for us. Here's the back pages, which still have the fallout from... Scotland's failure. Uh, the Daily Record, the height of nonsense. I knew this was going to be the case. Um, right now, everyone in the media, right across Gordon's assessment of our uh, genetically challenged players and also their uh, SFA chief executive, Stuart Regan, saying, we'll let you know, God, about your future. Uh, I think the general consensus is the decision will be made by the end of the week on his future as Scotland manager, the Sun. <coughs> Again, Gordon Strachan there saying, no regrets about the campaign. 20 years of pain continues for Scotland. Uh, and again, no rush there. And just at the top, uh, Irish joy as Wales are knocked out and the Republic of Ireland look forward to a playoff to get to the World Cup. And the Daily Mail, no regrets. Again, Gordon Strachan there. And there's a cracking picture of James McLean who scored the all-important goal for the Republic against Wales. Just that uh, one mistake by Wales allowed the Republic of Ireland to get the chance and boy, did they take it. So, uh, no surprise, Ruffy, the papers <coughs> all seizing on uh, the Gordon Strachan uh, discussion about height. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think basically you've got to take it into context what he was trying to explain that if you're, if you're playing against guys who are six foot three, six foot four, and the most of your defenders are already six one, they've got an advantage, and basically that's all he was trying to say. I mean, okay, it went a bit deeper with, you know, maybe we should make an effort in trying to get bigger people <laughs> playing the game, but mm. it, for me it was all about. I think what was really hurting him was he knew people were going to cash in and the goals that we lost that cost us, it balls into the box that were they defended properly. And uh, if we defended them properly, we probably would have been in the playoffs. Yeah, well, a million and one people have discussed, Ruffy, the fact that we had a tall goalkeeper who maybe should have uh, come out on a couple of occasions to save us. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I gave him a view on that the other day. I think uh, the goal uh, at, uh, with Slovenia there, I think the defenders should have dealt with it first before it got to him. And I just think people didn't pick up runners. Uh, obviously, Fletcher left his guy for the header. It's easy enough saying that, but Craig will know himself whether he could have came for it or not. I, I personally think at where the highest the ball was, he would have had to come through maybe six, eight players, and there was no guarantee he was going to get it. Uh, so it's one of these things, ifs and buts, but... Uh, just never happened for us. Yeah, Leanne, you know what it's like to sample the pain at international level of, of not getting where you want to go. Um, I, I don't know what your thoughts on it uh, as far as the back line is concerned, <coughs> but I think if we had somebody like Johnny Evans or Gareth McCauley for Northern Ireland, we might have been looking at qualification. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'd agree with what Ruffy's saying. Though. You've got a job to do, and I, I think if there's a slight height difference, it, it probably does, to an extent, make a difference. Um, but Gordon, he put out his team and he trusted them to, to go and do that job and I think the rest of Scotland trusted them as well. Um, I think that's probably why it hurts that bit more. Would you like to see him stay or go? Uh, I'd like to see him stay. I think it, it probably sends the wrong message. Um, I, we'd kind of discussed it earlier as well and 
I think if managers keep going, uh, you know, after a failure or an unsuccessful attempt, I don't think it, it, it gives the right message to, to Scotland as a nation. Um, and I think looking at the way club managers are, are dealt with, I would like to see Gordon stay on and, and put right the, the wrongs um, for this campaign, which I, I think we're more than capable of doing that. Yeah, I mean, already we've, we've already looked at some of the runners and riders, Ruffy, but I even read this morning Sam Allardyce is one of those guys. You wouldn't be drawn on whether he was a, a candidate or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we've got enough uh, candidates from Scotland. Uh, the ones we threw up on the screen the other day would be more than capable, but I agree. I, th I think Gordon should, should stay, you know, uh, 14 points out of 18 uh, is progression for me. Yeah. I know we had a poor start. That sometimes happens in campaigns, but he rectified it. The players are all right behind him. And I have to say that uh, although the disappointment of getting beat there at the weekend, if you go back to the Slovakia game, the fans are certainly behind him as well. Because if you look at the scenes at the end of that game, you know, everybody was pulling in the right direction. And I think that's what you need to do. So why not just continue it? Yeah, uh, it's interesting on the, uh, the uh, genetically... Um, uh, <sighs> How can, I, how can I put this? I mean, a genetically challenged uh, situation that Gordon put across with our players being maybe too small. Um, no surprise that a newspaper has contacted <laughs> a specialist <laughs> from Stirling University or University of Dundee, I beg your pardon, Professor Blair H. Smith. I read this this morning saying um, genetically different would be a more accurate term uh, and he questioned the veracity um, of the claim that height was the key to success. Um, so questioning uh, the truth of whether height would have made uh, that much of a difference. Here's, uh, in interestingly enough, uh, Owen Coyle, the uh, Ross County boss, who's been talking about it today. And first of all, on that point about uh, small players. Well, I think Scotland's always been known for having very good, gifted, smaller players. I mean, I think... Uh, certainly back when I was, was growing up I think they used to be called Tanner Ball players because uh, but they were certainly fantastic players now we have a number of them so I think it's, it's getting that balance between those 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 players I mean Spain have shown you know with, with some very small players how gifted the team they can be so I think it's utilising the best of your abilities what you've got at your disposal because ultimately Gordon can only pick from the, the pool of players that he has In my mind um, I, I get the feeling that if you want to solve this problem, uh, Leanne, it's like any sport. It's like women's football at international level, at club level as well. It's the Andy Murray scenario. If you want to be the best, you have to go that extra mile. You have to work on your technique. You have to work on your physicality. Yeah, uh, totally. Um, there's a lot of kind of sports science people that are probably sitting at home just now and jumping off the sofa at the comments about the, the genetically, um, you know, the differences between and, and how you can better that and how you can be the best that you can be. Um, and I think that's all you can do. I, I think Scotland as a nation, we work with what we've got. I've lined up in, in many a squad where you look at the, the team lineup or the anthem and there is a huge height difference, but you don't for a second believe that you can't beat them or that you can't match them. And um, what you've maybe you lack in, in certain areas, you can certainly make up for elsewhere. And, and I think, Scotland can do that. Yeah. Do you buy into the Andy Murray scenario? I mean, for me, uh, Ruffy, when people were looking at him, he was slight, um, maybe not as uh, muscular as some of the other tennis players, but mm -hmm. boy, he went away and worked at it. I think we have to do that. Mm -hmm. I think we have to have that mentality. Somewhere along the line, <clears throat> we have to change our approach to the football, whether it's even the psychology, which I think we're embracing more and more, Physicality we have to work on, but technique is everything for me. Yeah. There was one player in that uh, Slovakian side who was, you know, gifted. Yeah. And uh, we don't really have, you know, no. the players that you look at and you think, oh, he can go past the man and open up a defence. No, I, I would think if you looked at every team in our group, they had somebody like that. Even Malta uh, had a boy in midfield who was way ahead. Uh, the Maltese players, technically, he, he was gifted. We don't have... That kind of player at the moment, that sort of a match winner. We, we have 11 guys going out, out there and, and doing their best. And as you said, their players have moved on now. They're athletes. I would like to think that every one of them is, is eating properly and listening to what everybody's said, taking all the, the advice that's going about. But that, that, 
uh, to get back to that, Gordon's just trying to explain how we lost two goals for the defensive side. That's all he's doing. Yeah. He's just saying, if I've got players on my team that are small, it's very difficult to put them into a defensive position when there's two six-foot-four guys coming up. I have to sort of balance that out. I think we're just getting caught up in this genetic thing a bit too much. Yeah, OK. Well, sorry about that, Ravi. I wish I hadn't brought it up now. Um, uh, should he stay or should he go? Every manager's going to have a say this week. Here's what Owen Coyle thinks. It's not a time for change, it's a time for, it's a time for stability. I think, you know, had, uh, had it went the other way and the, and the team would be in a great position and then they were, you know, bit by bit, you know, had lost games here and there, but that was, it was quite the reverse. We had a little dip within the middle of the, the group, but they've picked themselves up and finished so strongly. You look at the performance against, you know, England and how close they came that day and, you know, had we held on, you'd probably be in the playoffs already. So I think there's a lot of good work being done by God and the staff. I think it's the time for everybody to get behind them, show that level of support and really push is on to, to get ready for the, for the next European Championships. Yeah, so uh, he thinks we should just keep that stability. There's no need mm -hmm. to change it, Ruffy. Do you agree, yeah? Yeah, I agree. I, I would like to see uh, some more players pushing themselves through, like McGinn, McGregor. I would like to see some younger guys forcing their way in. OK, you can continue to give us your view on social media at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. Should have changed my mind 14 times, Ruffy, as Gordon Smith often does on this programme before it before it comes up. We didn't get anywhere near it. I did, that was a year. Yeah? That's good enough for me. You're a year out. Yep, <coughs> yeah. You don't get you you don't actually get points for being close. Yeah, it's the story of fun. Scotland at the moment. Um <laughs> Could I yeah. get a playoff? Eh? No. no, you won't get into a playoff either. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm just thinking there, and this is really going to hurt. It's going to be painful for for y you and I on this. Uh, I imagine you were 10, is that right? The last time we qualified for a tournament? Yeah. Wow, wow that is unbelievable. I was looking this morning, Ruffy. The last time we qualified, Tony <coughs> Blair was Prime Minister. If you wanted to keep up to date with the scores, it was teletext. Oh. Do you remember that? Uh, Ronaldo was the top star. Tim Henman was the number one in tennis, and I was working at STV. <laughs> Some things don't change. <laughs> well, I don't want to sort of rub it in, but I was in three qualifying competitions for the World Cup, and we qualified every time. Yeah, yeah. and do you know what? Tell you something. I knew you were going to get that in. By the way, how to alienate yourself from the audience and make everybody raging? Unfortunately, uh, the disappointment was when we got there. <coughs> That yeah. was when we had to, and I think Gordon touched on it in the Uruguay game. Uh, there's nothing worse than, uh, all right, no qualifying and goal difference. Do you know the other thing about it, Ruffy? Now, now Leanne, you're going to be amazed at this. Craig Brown used to get pelters because people said that they, they wouldn't open the curtains to watch his team. They were boring. In 1998, they were boring. Now we just want to get there. We don't care if we're boring. We just want to get there. Yeah, that was a disappointing thing for me as a player. I mean, there's a lot of players there who are wonderful players who are not going to get to a World Cup final. That, that'll be the, dis the personal disappointment for them. You know, you, I could see uh, two or three of them saying, you know, getting the feeling that that's it sort of a thing and it's a yeah. horrible thing. Well, listen, I, I don't know why as a nation we're moaning. It's 60 years since Wales qualified for a World Cup and I think even then in 1958 it was by invitation um, so the pain of last night was there for all to see it is the best rendition of a national anthem ever uh, Leanne I mean the, 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 the entire nation singing it no music in the background off the, the you know in full voice the Welsh national anthem yeah I watched it this morning I seen the um the clip online and everybody kind of going mad for it, but it's that's passion. That's what football and, and sport does to people. And I think in, in Scotland we've got that as well. And I've certainly felt that a couple of times. Um, but last night it was special. Yeah, it, it seemed to lift them and then pff, flat. And do you yeah. know why, Ruffy? <clears throat> because Wales aside with a good a good player in Aaron Ramsey who didn't really do anything last night. Um, couple of other players, you know, A-OK, -okay, but Gareth Bale 
world class. It can can be the difference. A world class player, a special player. I wish we had one. Yeah. But as I mentioned to you, Douglas is the last one we had. Mm-hmm. Well, I think after that, I mean, I know he's not. Don't get me wrong here. He's not in the same caliber as Douglas. But James McFadden for me single-handedly nearly took us to big competitions because in the form that he was in he used to just take over games yeah. individually score fantastic goals and everybody lifted their game with him round about I just don't think we have a player like that in the team yeah. who does something special and you go wow we've got him on our side and Leanne will tell you and I always say this when you're in a dressing room with footballers you look about the dressing room and you go if we're struggling who's going to win this for us and there's somebody in that dressing room that you know can do something better than the others and I just don't think we, we're a great team collectively I think we are on our game okay we're not fantastic but we're all <coughs> working we, we just don't have that Gareth Bale mm. but you touched on a point there and I was speaking to Leanne about it in that game last night the Irish the last 10 minutes defending for their life yeah. anything anything that came into that box there was no way a Welsh player was going to get it. They attacked everything that came into that box. And again, I mean, I, I can understand where you're coming from saying James McFadden was the talisman. James McLean's the talisman for them. I mean, he just mm. scores crucial goals for them. And, and that was on his less favoured foot last mm. night. Brilliant finish from a blunder from the Welsh goalkeeper. Did, Why he threw that out, I'll never know. Did you not think at one stage the ball was over the line? Initially, just on about the touchline, yeah. I thought it looked, it could, I don't know why, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe obviously, the whole ball's got to be over it, but look, for a split second, I didn't see anybody complaining. Yeah, the boy just charged on. Yep, yeah, uh, good goal. And again, Martin O'Neill works his magic, signed a new deal 2020. I've got to ask you, Leanne, is there a just picking up on Ruffy's point there, is there a player when you're in the dressing room in, uh, in the women's international where you look and you think, oh, thank god she's here? Yeah, I think Kim Little's probably been uh, our main player over you know, the, over the last decade anyway. She can turn the game in its head if, if Kim fancies it on the day and um, the, the chips are down. You know that she's got something that she can create. You know, that one player that you know has got that. Yeah, what um, makes her special? Uh, just her talent, I think. Just the, the all-round kind of... She's fearless as well, the way that she plays. It's, she doesn't uh, worry you know, what other teams might think of her or know of her. She just plays the game. It's just raw talent that she's got and she's got the fitness and the engine um, and the desire to go with it. So um, she's an all-round good player. Yeah. One that you definitely are glad to have. Yeah. Does it make you a better player? Oh, definitely, yeah. Because she demands more of you and it, it makes the game easier to play. If you play alongside good players, there's some things that you don't need to think of. It's, it just comes naturally. Um, yeah. She does bring out the best. Of course, the, 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 there's more pain on the way, Rafi, because when they do the, the, the when they make the draw for the for the qualifiers, you know, for the for the playoffs, mm-hmm. it even becomes more pay, painful. Mm-hmm. It's more painful, I think, for Slovakia. Yeah, it is obviously. I think it's if Greece beat Gibraltar tonight, then they'll be out. Uh, Gibraltar haven't won a game. I think they've only scored about three goals in the competition. So Greece will be getting into the game at home, you know, looking very confident. But. I, a double down of that is going to be for Slovakia. You know, their players will have to come to terms with that. Yeah, and uh, I hate to go back over the, the height thing. You've put a bit of research into this, but Iceland, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, Iceland now blow, blows out every yeah. theory that any manager mm-hmm. has because, quite simply, um, you know, a population less than Glasgow, the entire country, 334,252 mm-hmm. of them. I've counted them roughly. Um, mm-hmm. That's the population. Uh, and they've been at the Euros, and now they're the smallest nation ever to qualify for the World Cup as winners of the group. Yeah, well, obviously they're built on the Euros. You know, the, everything when you go to a big, big competition, you just grow in confidence, and it means the next competition you go in, you're more confident that you're going to get out of the group, and, and that's what they've done. But it looks as if they've got a squad there that's all the same size. There doesn't seem to be many smaller people in that squad. Yeah, did you did you not tell me you'd worked out the I think average? they're all about six foot one. I think that's the yeah. minimum there. But the height, the height thing does nothing for me. If if a big boy comes into the box, you get a big guy to mark him. You know, don't yeah. put a midfield, don't put Barry Van on him. I mean, that's as simple <laughs> as that. You know, I just, I think we're getting too deep into this conversation of, yeah. it's all about organisation. And Leanne's already touched on it. If you're up against somebody that's two or three inches bigger than you, you just, make sure they don't get a run on you. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's so many football things you can do. So I think we're 
some people are using this. You know, I know Gordon said it, and he'd yeah. probably regret he has said it, but now <laughs> people are using it to, <laughs> to beat them over yeah. the head with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let me let me give you uh, something that again uh, continues the height theme. But uh, Lionel Messi, greatest player in the world right now. You, you could have the argument with Ronaldo, but for me, Messi, greatest player in the world. And Argentina might not make it. That takes some doing. They might not make it if they don't win against Bolivia. I know. I think that just shows you football, though. It doesn't matter how good he, Argentina have got that individual that we're, we're sitting speaking about, wishing that, that Scotland had, and they're in almost the same position that they might not make it either. So it's a bit of team at the end of the day, and Argentina have maybe not performed as well as they could have. Maybe they re, you know, rely too much on Messi. Who mm -hmm. knows? But... It's a difficult one for them if they don't get there. Can you imagine the World yeah. Cup without Messi as, as Leandro? Yeah, that's what, I mean, that's what the World Cup's all about. That's why I'm, every time we have a discuss, discussion about who's a World Cup uh, player, World Cup players turn up at World Cups yeah. and they, they make the competitions their own. That's mm -hmm. why we say he's world class because he's up against the top players in the world. So if players like that were missing, then it'd be a, it'd be a shocker for us. They have to be playing them at centre half for them, have they? No, they haven't. No, they, they haven't. <laughs> By the way, I did say it was. I did say it was Bolivia. I've just looked. It's Ecuador. It makes oh, it even worse. They're not as good as Bolivia. So I mean, I, I just cannot believe it. I mean, if you think about sponsors, Ruffy. I mean, remember the hullabaloo in 1998 when when Ronaldo potentially wasn't going to play, and they reckoned that you know uh, one of the, the sports sponsors forced him into playing when he wasn't well. Um, can you remember that whole... Mm -hmm. No, I don't remember that. You don't? No. He was sick yeah. beforehand. He wasn't on the team sheet. Then all of a sudden he was in, yep. included on the right. team sheet. Leanne remembers and she was 10. No. Where were you? I think I had no. his boots that year. I think that's no. why I remember it so well. You but it was, it was, it was, that's what every kid wanted to be, I yeah, think, right. back then yeah. when I was... Yeah. Yeah. I had actually had doctors lying in my pocket in Argentina. <laughs> but I never sort of produced that. I just went out and... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you didn't want to face the flak when you came home. Um, well, I'm not going to talk about Argentina. It's just too painful. It's going to be painful for them if they don't beat Ecuador, let me tell you. Uh, no Messi at the World Cup. Incredible. Um, you can give us your thoughts. Um, again, it's raging everywhere. Should he stay or should he go Gordon Strachan? Um, and uh, you can also give us your thoughts on who you'd like to maybe see playing for Scotland as well now, because there's undoubtedly a number of players who won't be featuring in the next squad for European qualification into the Euros uh, at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy um, we're going to talk about a huge night of football for Leanne Crichton in the Champions League 3-0 down uh, to Kazagurt of Kazakhstan can they turn it around on Thursday night at Peters Hill Park Tough, Ruffy. I was all over the place there, and I love that movie. If you ever, if you ever get a chance to see that movie, it's absolutely fantastic. Yep, well, I'll take your word for that. I'll try and find that, and uh, I don't have that. Am I allowed to say things? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. What, will it take oh, us I'll off say, No, no, no. I don't have Netflix, so <clears throat> right. we we'll won't okay, be able right. to find it. Why don't you buy it on Betamax, Ruffy, and stick it in your, your old recorder? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you even have the, the DVD that you can borrow. Quite yeah. a fan. Oh, I've right. got the DVD. The problem is you never get it back off him. <laughs> He's one of those pals that you just wave goodbye to the DVD, uh, Leanne. <clears throat> OK, um, listen, it's huge. We managed to speak to you um, by Skype from Kazakhstan last week. Um, what went wrong? And tell us what you think you can do differently this time that suggests that you can overturn a 3-0 deficit from the first leg. I think... I wouldn't say individual errors. I think just collectively as a team, we made mistakes. Um, just at the wrong time in the game, you know, we were uncomfortable at half time and, and come back out um, within five or ten minutes with a couple of goals down, which is kind of the opposite to the game plan that we, we had set out to do. 
Um, so that was disappointing, but we felt comfortable. Um, at half time we felt comfortable, and, e and even after looking back on it, um, there was a lot of good things that we'd done. Um, so we're, we're really confident going into the game on Thursday that um, we, can, we can turn it around. Um, it's just football, it's one yeah. of this mad 12 minutes. And, um, and it came it crashing around you, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you mentioned the fact that you, you were the seeded team as well, so, uh, I mean, did they have anything, apart from the conditions which, which were treacherous, did they have anything that they did better than you, apart from that point where you were the you, you really created your own downfall? Yeah, I think this week we spoke um, a, a lot about headers in the middle of the park and defensively that was where one of the goals um, at least came from, was just not winning that first ball, um, which is crucial, especially at that level you get punished. If you don't win your first and second balls, it, it, teams will score against you and ultimately that was what happened. So um, we've spoke about that and we've, we know that we need to do, do more than that. Um, but we are we're confident it's been a, a busy week, a lot of travelling, um, not a lot of recovery time. Um, we played again on Sunday as well and we've only really had one session yesterday to kind of prepare and tomorrow we'll train again and it's the day before the game so there's not too much that you, you can go through, a lot of it has to be spoke about um, off the pitch and hopefully we can right the wrongs. Yeah, now Ruffy's raging because you're, uh, you've are you got 56 caps which is three more than him and of course it's only a matter of time before Craig Gordon passes him as well. <laughs> so it's just going to be a really bad year for you, Ruffy. Um, but, um, you know, from the early days where, 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 where women's football was starting to get a bit of prominence, mm -hmm. um, people focus on it. Um, is the is the standard from when you were first at Glasgow City to now has it increased? Can you see that upward trend? You know, because I, I mean, look at what. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Am I not right in thinking that Norway are now paying their international footballers, male and female, the same amount of money for appearances? Yeah, I think that was one of the the headlines um, I seen online this week, uh, which is great. It's great steps for for them as a nation. Um, we obviously kind of have fought our own corner at times in, in terms of what we get. Um, but the game has grown, you know, there's no getting away from that. And I think it, it is now is the time that everybody needs to buy into the, the fact that it's actually happening. It's There are people interested in it, there is demand for it. And you have seen huge um, leaps forward, you know, especially even since 2013 when I was at Glasgow City last. Um, we've gone from being a team that would get through the qualifying groups um, and now we are a seeded team so that's huge even in, in terms of Scotland that's a massive difference for us to go in as a seeded team and it does change the outlook of the tournament for us if, you know depending on the opposition that we get drawn against and in Kazakhstan for us where um, a good draw you know taking away the travel um, it was a good draw in terms of the football inside it so we're confident from that that, that we know that we should be better than them but that changes on the day so you're going to go and win this one fingers crossed on that of course we wish everybody at Glasgow City the best of luck what's the manager like is he, a, <coughs> is he one of those guys who throws teacups about I mean he do, he do, Scott Booth doesn't strike me as that type of person at the best of times no he's definitely not um, I got on well with, with Scott and I think his manner um, is right especially for being in women's football and, and dealing with things um, there's probably no worse place to be actually at times in, in a dressing room with, with us lot, um, grumping and moaning at times, but he deals with that, he knows um, how to handle the team and um, he gets a point, you know, it gets across his points um, well on and off the pitch, um, which is good, he's a good guy to work with. Yeah, uh, international level, a couple of uh, big games uh, coming up for Scotland and of course it's a change of manager there. Uh, have you had any great uh, discussions with her on uh, the way ahead, the plans for Scotland and Shelley care? Not too much um, directly with Shelley, just as, as the team. The last time we were together was a friendly against Hungary and within that camp she was able to get across you know, the direction that she's hoping to take the team. Um, and it's a competitive environment, it's, it's similar to the, the problems that um, Gordon Stratton probably faces. There's young players coming through, there's a core group of players that have, have been there for a long time and she's just managing her way through that and, and hopefully it takes us on to the next level. Which do, you, do you notice the difference from the girls that uh, leave Scotland and go and play in other countries? Do you notice the difference when they come back into your environment? I think it, it now betters us, um, 
because it is a, a totally professional environment now wherever you play. Um, and that's the, the kind of change that I've seen, um, especially when I went away and played down in England and would come back, it changes you. It kind of almost makes you grow up and take responsibility for, for what you do. It's a job at the end of the day now for people, so you either buy into it and you give your all. Um, but it really gives us a boost when players come back and they've been playing in big games, winning trophies. Ultimately, that has an impact in the national side, and for us, it's been great over the last couple of years. Yeah. If Kim Little's the, uh, the star player, do we have enough to suggest that we can make a go of these qualifiers coming up? Yeah, well, unfortunately, we've, we've been without Kim. Um, even during the Euros, she picked up a, a serious yeah. injury, and um, we got there a, you know, a couple of games without her. So there is there's great talent now throughout the squad and a real confidence coming off the back of the Euros, and we believe in, in what we can do. Um, we know that the manager believes in what we can do, and, and we do have the backing. Um, of the FA as well, which, which is massive going forward. And you see that with teams like Norway and Iceland and um, other countries that have now made a stance. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Is there a, is there a gap between, you know, the likes of a, 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 the structure and the setup at Scotland and what's happening in England? Seems to be a lot of money down there. Yeah, I think it's similar. The, the men's and the women's game, the gulf between men's English football and men's Scottish football is probably similar in, in terms of the women's set up now and you're always going to be playing catch up um, but we just need to keep doing what we're doing we're definitely going in the right direction and um, financially we, we might not catch up but there's, there's, there's other ways that we can better the game up here and we'll continue to do that. Yeah, um, uh, I just wanted to try and put things in perspective for you. Just to, you know, you don't need to reveal how much you get paid at international level, um, but uh, Ruffy can reveal how much you get paid in 1977. Uh, walking out now, bear in mind, 1977, would Kevin Keegan have been in the England side? Mick Shannon, Mick Mills, Kevin Beattie, uh, Emily Hughes, Emily Hughes Ray, Clemens. Ray Clemens, big stars mm -hmm. in that side, Ruffy. They were on lots of money. What were you on? Uh, we were on £100. £100 appearance? Yeah. And when? Uh, I don't remember getting a bonus for winning. No? Leanne, I tell you, it doesn't, money's not important when you play. <laughs> 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 Leanne, and I almost <laughs> fell off the chair. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> driven, dri yeah. driven by the dollar. Yeah. Oh, magnificent, Ruffy. Money's not important. That's the catchphrase of the whole program. <laughs> I kid you not. Um, you'd have been a millionaire, Ruffy, if you'd been playing now. I mean, I think most players have. Heard you would, you'd would have changed your mobile. I would have been able to contact with you. <laughs> It's incredible when you think about it. A um, couple of things before we hit to the break. And uh, I, I, I want to talk about Louis Moult. He's the player of the month. No surprise there, uh, getting that award. He's been so uh, important to Motherwell. Yeah, he has right from the, the, the transfer saga settled down. And, and you have to say all credit to him. You know, a lot of players would still have that in the back of your mind, what you've missed out on. But he's sort of a shelf it and getting on and then scoring goals for his team and winning games. So he deserves everything that's coming his way. Yeah, goal scorers key. It could be the difference. I mean, I, I don't even think Mother will be worrying about anything like playoffs or relegation because he's so important. But there are there are other players coming through. Chris Cadden, we've been talking mm -hmm. about Ryan Bowman at Motherwell as well. You've watched them. Yeah, I've watched them um, the last couple of games and they have been really impressive, Louis Moult in particular. But I think the way he plays, he almost brings other people into the game as well and allows players like Bowman and, and Cadden to do well. So I don't think Motherwell have got any problems this year at all. Yeah, absolutely. Just in case you're wondering, uh, Leanne, you know, it was a tough signing, Ruffy, to try and get her on a, a three-year rolling contract. It was difficult to deal with getting her on more than a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, but you did enough haggling. You know, you eventually you convinced her, you know, to come down a big bit. Yeah, and give us, <laughs> and give, and give us money. <laughs> Uh, Saturday <laughs> afternoons, two o'clock. Um, of course, uh, Glasgow City don't play on a Saturday afternoon, which is why we're lucky enough to get Leanne to go out and uh, uh, work for us at the football matches. You can join us, STV2, at two o'clock every Saturday, four hours, bringing you the best of the football uh, reporters, including Leanne, out at those games. After the break, we're going to talk Ballon d'Or nominees and Bobby Charlton.
Did you say 1968, Ruffy? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that blank look in your face says it all. Um, okay, uh, final part of the programme. Leanne Crichton <coughs> is our boot room guest tonight ahead of that big Champions League match against uh, Kazakurt. It's Glasgow City hoping to overturn a 3-0 first leg deficit. Let's hope they can do it, fingers crossed. Uh, that takes place on Thursday at Peters Hill. If you get a chance, get along there. Um, uh, kick off of that, half seven is it? Half seven. Half yep. seven. Um, get along to Peters Hill and support Glasgow City in their Champions League bid. Um, I've been reading a couple of things I want to get your thoughts on, Ruffy. Uh, first of all, uh, the draw for the quarterfinals of the Iron Brew uh, Cup has been uh, uh, made. Dundee United Crusaders, New Saints against Queen of the South, Inverness Cali Thistle against Falkirk and Dumbarton against Wraith Rovers. So um, Inverness is winning at the weekend, I think was crucial for John Roberts and just gives him a chance just to maybe instill a bit of confidence in Inverness. Yeah, I, th I think the more the more wins he gets, the better. He's not had a great start and uh, obviously everybody sees a, a good cup run as uh, something you can move on to your league position. So and I think the teams that are left in it will be trying to win it, obviously. But uh, I think Inverness, uh, Falkirk would like a an extended run in that one as well. So, no, I, th I think it's a good competition. I think the new format is good as well because you're coming up against teams, obviously, you don't meet week in, week out. And uh, the, the further you get, the better it is. And you can't beat a cup uh, final at the end of the tournament. Yeah, a uh, couple of players have been speaking today and a couple of newspapers have picked up on some <coughs> uh, stories. Darren McGregor could be back in time for the Edinburgh Derby. That would be huge, Ruffy. Yeah, I think Neil's already identified that uh, with McGregor and Fontaine out, they've, they've been losing goals that they probably wouldn't if they were there. But uh, no, I, I like Darren, I think he's a really good player and uh, the sooner he comes back, the better for him. Yeah, have you ever been to an Edinburgh Derby, at Leanne? I have actually, yeah, been to a couple. Yeah? Yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. I think any Derby's always a good game to watch, so I, I try to get along to them when I can. Um, but the green side will be happy now that they're are back at the top level of Scottish football, I think, and chasing hearts again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, what's what's the most memorable game you've been at? Is there, is there a game that sticks in your mind? You thought oh, I just thoroughly enjoyed that. There's a question to throw at you, and it wasn't even wasn't even on the plan. Um, I went to a Manchester derby, the one that was three three. I think it was maybe four years ago. Um, a cracking game of football. I think just the best, some of the best players in the world playing. So that's one that kind of sticks in my, my head but I, I like all football games and I think even some that maybe the score lines aren't too great I think they're always enjoyable. Yeah absolutely yeah. especially when you look and see uh, the standard of other players. Aberdeen's Mark Reynolds uh, has been talking on their website Ruffy he mentioned he says that Ryan Christie is the most complete player he's ever seen. Um, now I can see a wry smile in your face. <laughs> you know, when I read that, I thought to myself, "Mark, you need to get out more." No disrespect to Ryan no. Christie, because I think no. Ryan Christie's a good player. Um, but if he's the most complete player, um, is that maybe? Is it maybe that you know he's been at Celtic and mm -hmm. you know, and he's he's had that standard of player that he's been training with. He's moved up a bit mm -hmm. because it, Mark Reynolds reckons he's he's having an impact on all the other well, players there. I would think if he'd added as a young player just starting off in the game, he could be a complete player because uh, at his, uh, where he is just now, I think he's a fantastic player. I think he's definitely a player who's going to be part of the Scotland setup, uh, maybe two or three years' time. I think uh, the boy's been looked after in the right way. I think it's good he's been phantomed out. And you can see, you know, he's got something that a lot, that we talked about it earlier in the show, he, he's got something that other players haven't got at yeah. that age. He can see a pass, he can see, he can score great goals outside of the foot, whatever. Uh, I definitely think he is a player for the future. Not the complete player yet, but uh, yeah. who's to say he won't be? Uh, I, I mean, I wonder, uh, I think he should be pushing now. I think he should. I think he's he's getting football with Aberdeen. He should be maybe just hopefully at the, in, on the periphery of Gordon Strachan's thoughts or a, another manager mm -hmm. at international level, Leon. Yeah, I think so. I think playing at Aberdeen will be helping him a lot as well. They're a, a team doing well, and he probably doesn't need the pressure of, of being told that he's, you know, got it all just now. You know, just keep making those steps, keep striving towards the next thing that he can achieve in his, his career and I think it won't be before too long that he's a Scotland player. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see how the midfield develops with players who will clearly decide enough is enough, Rafi. I can't wait to see who well, really makes the push 
in the next few months to say, yeah. I should be in here? Well, it's up to the players. It's up to the young players. Uh, I do believe there's a friendly coming up next <laughs> month. Uh, that's an ideal opportunity. I think by uh, that time, we'll know which players have said, right, I've had enough international football, what players are pushing to get in. And I think we, we shouldn't be sort of a just hanging about waiting to see if they are good enough. Let's see if they are. Now, I don't know who. It'll probably be one of the countries that are in the finals, mm -hmm. you know, who want to play as, as a build-up. So th let's see the McGregors. Let's see the McGinns. Let's mm. see any young players. Let's see if there's a centre-half out there who we think you know, in the next year or two might break into it. Let's see what they can do in the game. That's the only way you find out. Are we being misguided in thinking that Scott Brown's an automatic thank you and good night? Well, I think one of the reasons that Scott Brown come back was because of Gordon Stratton. Uh, I think uh, they have a very closeness with club and now we're international football. I think Gordon persuaded them uh, because I think... Obviously, Scott was looking at his future, you no know, picking up injuries. So, I think again that'll be a big decision. It'll be a Gordon Stratton. If he's not there, does that mean Scott Brown's not there either? Yeah, uh, interesting times to see how that develops. Uh, okay, over the last uh, 24 and 48 hours, the Ballon d'Or nominees <coughs> have been uh, released to the public to get uh, a little insight into the 30 names. I think there are seven Premier League stars in there. Um, I wonder if it'll be the usual suspects again picking up the award. Um, so here's the first set that, that's been released. Is there a winner in uh, this one? Obama Yang, Benzema, Bonucci, Buffon, Cavani, Coutinho, De Bruyne, De Gea, uh, De Bala, uh, Dzeko, Falcao, Griezmann, Hazard, Hummels and Isco. Is there a winner in that first set, Ruffy? I think there's two or three that uh, would be there or thereabouts, but I think as the, the Champions League uh, tournament progresses, when have they got to make the decision for this? Uh, it's coming up in the next uh, couple of weeks. Well, it won't be at the end of this Champions League games, but I think when you see Champions League games, that the people who really do something, they come right to you. Mm -hmm. And there's a three or four of them on there just now. But I'm waiting to see the next list. Yeah, well, it comes to the short list. OK, Leanne is the winner of the Ballon d'Or in this next list. <laughs> Here's your Harry Kane and Golo Conte, Tony Cruz, Lewandowski, Mane, Marcelo, Mbappe, Mertens, Messi, Modric, Neymar, Oblak, Ramos, Ronaldo and Suarez. I think that, that list probably looks slightly stronger than, than the first. Um, Hazard in the, the first list is the one that jumped out to me. And I think Chelsea had a good year last year, um, but as Ruffy says, it, it's normally the ones that are current, um, that are in form. Harry Kane at the, at the top of that one, scoring goals for fun, so you never know. Yeah, but Harry Kane, um, uh, yeah, listen, they're pushing him non-stop, Ruffy, but I cannot... I cannot <coughs> see past the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. Somebody out of left field. I mean, you thought Buffon last year was never going to happen. You just wonder if Ronaldo was to win the Ballon d'Or again, whether he would have the out-and-out -out claim to be the, the you know the greatest footballer of his generation. Oh, certainly if he keeps winning it, you've got to get all the candidates together and then come up with uh, <laughs> the right answer. But certainly present day, the present day people who watch him will have him up there. Unfortunately for us, we can go back a wee bit further and see other stars uh, that uh, of our era, but uh, it's difficult to balance them up because obviously things have moved moved on, but I think it'll be the same. Neymar, Ronaldo, Messi. I think Lewandowski's got to get a shout because I think he's been prolific, you know, with club and country. Yeah, OK. Um, just before we go, uh, there's a, a gentleman who won a Ballon d'Or in his <laughs> time as a professional footballer. Uh, he's 80 on Wednesday and one of my favourite players from this particular era um, because he could score goals, he could, uh, you know, make passes. He had everything, uh, Ruffy, and he also was part of a, an unbelievable generation mm -hmm. of footballers at Manchester United. Tragically, a side that looked as if they were going to the top in Europe cut down in their prime in the mm -hmm. 1958 Munich air crash. I'm talking, of course, about Bobby Charlton. Sir Bobby Charlton, 80 on Wednesday. Yeah, fantastic player. You know, uh, again, you know, he'd best in that side as well, which took a probably a bit of the limelight away from him. But uh, he was a wonderful player, and if you get a chance to see clips of him, you know, superb from midfield to front. You know, the, I was remember I was at one a dinner with him once, and uh, when I was speaking, I had to get up and obviously say that he was here, and I said to him, "When I'm up speaking, uh, can I call you Bobby?" 
and he said, no, you can't. Uh, what's, the po- what's the point of having a title if you don't use it? It's <laughs> <laughs> a great line. <laughs> and here's, here's his list of honours. There are, there are too many to mention, but I thought I'd put in, he won the First Division three times, the FA Cup, Charity Shield four times, European Cup, World Cup and Ballon d'Or. Not a bad haul, Leanne. It's pretty good. I bet there's many players that would love to have a fraction of what he achieved. I think even now, just the way he's still there and about the game, I think it's fantastic. And as a younger player coming through and always seeing his presence, you know, at Man United, I think he's an ultimate professional. Yeah, um, Sir Bobby Charlton, 80 on Wednesday, and uh, of course played a huge part in Sir Alex Ferguson remaining as Manchester United manager, and the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, good luck to Glasgow City on Thursday night. Let's hope uh, Leanne isn't bothered about height if she's facing a six foot four Kazakhstan midfielder. She can deal with it, I know she can. Uh, from Leanne Ruffy and myself, thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>